Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, in this session, I would like to share uh, a, a very interesting uh, development in the uh, uh, area of Sharia law in Malaysia, where we managed to um, uh, evolve a customary uh, Malay customary practice to be a principle of Sharia law. And uh, specifically, uh, this uh, principle is developed to help a woman uh, to acquire her property rights, uh, land rights. Yeah? So as we know, women's ability to own, inherit and control land uh, and property is very, very important, especially to enable her to access resources and participate in the economy. Uh, and uh, we realize that many women globally, from my interaction, uh, that uh, they don't have, uh, they do not have legal uh, ownership rights to the land which they live and work. Um, maybe due to ignorance or owing to uh, some stringent customary practices, uh, and this actually increases women's dependence on husband and other uh, male relatives who own property, and uh, this can limit their access to credit and productive inputs. Uh, in Malaysia and Asia, especially. Uh, uh, a, a, a very uh, important development is that women are given uh, some important role in the development of the family uh, and also the family um, income. So uh, this enables women's property rights uh, uh, to be economically uh, better than uh, other women from other parts of the world. And this empower women by creating opportunity to earn income, secure their place in the community and ensure livelihoods. Uh, are guaranteed. And when women are economically empowered, uh, it helps with the development of families and communities. So in this uh, short lecture, I would like to explain the evolution of the customary practice of Hartas Pancharian or jointly acquired property, which is an evolution from the Malay matrilineal custom that is Adat Papate uh, to, to be part of a Sharia uh, system. Uh, this development uh, actually is traced uh, back to the colonial era uh, and uh, then I will look into the post-colonial era and what is the development now that uh, we have um, uh, come to uh, uh, in this uh, millennium. Yeah. So if you look at the colonial era, the recognition uh, for this custom was given by the colonial civil courts uh, based on the evidence from the Qadis, uh, Qadis the Islamic um, judge, yeah, Muslim judges, and Malay rulers on the customary practices prevailing uh, at a particular time, and uh, it's deemed to be Sharia compliant. However, this law was not recognized in Penang, where Penang, they applied the English law, uh, where property belongs to the husband. Uh, during the post-colonial era, after the independence, uh, with uh, lots of effort, especially from Professor Ahmad Ibrahim uh, and uh, some Muslim scholars, uh, this law actually became codified as Sharia law and became a provision in the Sharia enactment and within the Sharia jurisdiction. It can be uh, resolved in the Sharia courts. Then after the, uh, the, the recent development is that it is extended to include more movable property. Initially, we started with uh, immovable property and now we have uh, the rights for mobile property and also now, uh, very interesting, uh, the woman is entitled to claim for this uh, uh, quite jointly acquired property when the husband uh, takes another wife, that's polygamy. And also, uh, it is uh, now uh, can be mediated between the parties as part of the uh, Sulu um, uh, 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 process. Sulu is a process where the uh, husband and wife are uh, given an opportunity to mediate uh, the, the uh, rights and um, whatever they want to settle uh, in a divorce proceedings. Huh? Okay. During the colonial era, the uh, the adult law was actually uh, given uh, a broader co connotation, yeah? where in the Western uh, community, uh, the concept of either custom or, uh, or a law uh, is only on property, propriety of uh, land and commonality and appeals to particular moral styles and models of social consensus. Whereas in the uh, adapt, yeah, the relationship is uh, encompasses social behaviour, ritual responsibilities, reciprocal relatives, uh, colleague, collective obligations, as well as other duties and privileges membership in a community or uh, kinship uh, group. 
uh, in communal sanctions, critical, uh, critically important are the ancestral and communal sanctions that make law and custom, uh, living religions and social partners. So uh, we, we, we see the differences between the Arab and the Western concept. The Arab property was brought to Tanah Melayu or Malay, Malaya in the 15th century by the Minangkabau's from Sumatra. I, I trust that this uh, Minangkabau, uh, Minangkabau Adat or the Maslinian Adat is also practiced elsewhere in other 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 parts of the uh, Asian uh, as well as uh, South Asia, India. I think India they have this uh, Marumakataya. So it's something like that. So the Maslinian system practiced the Malays instead of Negris Milan. Uh, it is a cultural and social system which regulates the daily life economic system of government administration. And this Adat Party has been harmonized as part of Islamic family law. Uh, there were many uh, scholarly articles written and research done in this area where the Muslim scholars have uh, resolved the issue whether the Adat Party is uh, in harmony with Islamic uh, family law. Yes, uh, uh, it, it is actually uh, very much... Uh, uh, in 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 concern and with the Islamic uh, family law because it protects the woman's rights in property and also it elevates the woman's uh, status in the community. So the uh, the scholars were very much uh, interested in uh, upholding the woman's uh, rights. In fact, in Malaysia now we have thirty percent women in decision making uh, and management uh, and management. Um, what do I say? Uh, share, share, sharing the with the men. Men are still seventy percent, but women are given thirty percent rights. Yeah? Uh, so we are still filling up this quota thirty percent. Uh, the uh, interesting part is that this adat uh, in Malaysia is uh, a fusion of uh, customary practice, uh, and we know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when we when there's an adat that is uh, a custom that is uh, not. Uh, Again, Sharia or is Sharia compliant? Then is acceptable. So when the Malays, uh, Malay, Malays embrace Islam uh, together with their rulers, uh, the adat uh, became a part of their life, and is included in the practice of property ownership, dealings, and inheritance. So the colonialists, when they uh, started uh, in, imposing their law, they were I, I don't know whether to say they're kind or they were uh, good enough to allow the uh, Muslim personal law to be practiced. Yeah? So this is where when the matters were brought to court, they tried to understand the Malay customary practices, especially uh, that related to property rights. So when they uh, started uh, hearing cases and evidences and justification from the Muslim scholars, they uh, understood the, 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 prop the law. And interestingly, they did not apply uh, the British law. Because British law is very much uh, uh, male centric, so this is where the Muslim woman in Malaysia benefited. So the woman in the adat property custom are given uh, very high respect, and also they are protected. Yeah, so they they enjoy very high social status in the family, and they are heirs of the property, including land. And they are also caretakers of land and family wealth, because the man used to travel to to earn, you know, to, to find livelihood. So women are left behind on the uh, ancestral land and they take care of the children, educate the children. The education here is uh, more to the uh, Islamic education as well as the uh, normal uh, education. So women are given a very important role. They also become breadwinners and they manage the family wealth when the husband is away. So the survival of the woman, uh, the, the tribe depends on the woman and her survival depends on the ownership of land. So with land, she can live in health and peace. So this is how uh, the justification came about. So uh, the unique uh, aspect of Adapa Pate, it dictates the woman as the leader of society and inheritance of ancestral property are passed down to daughters and not sons. Uh, actually, this is not against uh, the Fara'id because what is passed down is only the ancestral property uh, whatever that is earned by the uh, husband and wife in the marriage, as well as what is acquired uh, in the marriage, uh, can be handed down as fara'id. But the hardest pancharan remains uh, to be to be shared between the uh, husband and wife. It's, it's a very interesting concept here, uh, where the um, uh, I, I'll explain it uh, in a, in a simpler manner, where. Uh, when the man comes into a marriage, they, they get married. When comes 
he lives in the woman's household. Uh, he marries into the family. So he will bring something. It's called harta bawaan. When he comes, the woman uh, has her own capital. That is the ancestral property. They stay together. They live together in harmony. And they work together and they come with, uh, they, they make an income. This is what is harta pancharan all about. So whatever earned during the substance of the marriage, it becomes harta pancharan. Uh, if there is a divorce, the man will bring back whatever he brought with him. And the woman will keep her ancestral property. But whatever earned during the marriage uh, by both efforts, it will be divided accordingly. So it, uh, it can be land, it can be uh, jewelry, it can be uh, anything that is acquired. So this is divided accordingly. And then after division, whatever is left is a part, it becomes the farai uh, for the children. And also the wife has a share. So the wife's share will be divided first. Uh, and she will get her first uh, division from the Hattas Pancharyan and then the balance will be divided accordingly with the family. So it's not against the Sharia because the children will get their fara'i, uh, but uh, provided the, um, the the wife's or the mother's right is um, taken care of. So um, one of the important uh, uh, aspects uh, that uh, the scholars rely upon is the Kawait Fikir or legal maxim in Islam, Article 35, where they say custom is arbitrary or custom is authoritative or custom is the basis of judgment. So basing, uh, using this maxim, the Muslim scholars in Malaysia developed uh, the system. So uh, they, they are very much um, guided by Sharia and uh, also uh, the Quran. So in the Quran, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 199, which reads, keep uh, keep to forgiveness and join Urf and turn away from the ignorance. So even the Quran recognizes the importance of Urf. So uh, Urf as the custom uh, is given due recognition under the Sharia uh, in Islam. So uh, when the uh, British heard all these evidences and uh, rationalization justification, they started understanding um, the concept and they uh, were very willing to include this as part and parcel of their, uh, you know, into their decision making. So when a, a case is brought to court, the British is willing to take this as an evidence from the Qadis and they deliver a decision uh, based on the, uh, based on the, uh, uh, on the evidence given by the Qadis. So there are some other um, sources that we use. It's already in the slides, yeah. So the legal provision uh, that was developed uh, by the judges, uh, I'll bring one judge here, Brick J, in the case of Huja Lija. This is a pre-independence case where the court held that the rules uh, governing uh, matrimonial property were not a part of Islam uh, law proper, Islamic law proper, but a matter of Malay custom and became, uh, and because the regulation of it, both in various states and in the courts were clearly um, the rules governing, it formed part of general law of the states. So this is uh, a very important recognition given to the um, uh, Harta Supancharan rule. And then, uh, of course, the Muslim scholars who are against um, the principle after much uh, persuasion and much uh, 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 sharing by the Muslim scholars who are in who are supporting the Harta Supancharan rule uh, agreed that uh, it does not contradict the Sharia principles in general. So uh, they, 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 the scholars uh, were very, very uh, proactive in developing this rule. And also we follow Imam Al-Sayyuti in, in his kitab, yeah? Al-Asbah wa Al-Nazayr, explained that well-known uh, Sharia uh, Islamic jurisprudential principle that, it, that the social custom of a particular nation or community which does not contradict Sharia principles may be recognized as a legal rule. So it's the, the 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 support is strong and it was getting stronger. So this is where uh, the judges, uh, the British judges, actually courts were men by British judges, not the Muslims. Huh? Muslims were limit Muslims' role were limited as Qadis to hear the Muslim personal law, the Sharia matters. So in the case of Teh Rasim and Na Naiman, uh, the initial judicial recognition of Hatta Sharia as a Malay custom was uh, considered. And they refer to the minutes of Perak Ruler in Council of 1907, where the executive ruling on the nature and content of the custom uh, was given. Yeah? So Delhi J, Delhi J is a judge, British judge, in one up's case, uh, recommended uh, for the legislation to be put in place 
uh, on this uh, customary practice. Huh? And in the case of one Marhat, Mar one Mahatan, Rama and Latan, uh, recognition kata pelayanan under Hukum Syarak was given. So this gave um, the 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 adat uh, a very strong basis to be developed into uh, a Sharia law. So the recognition of the importance was given uh, by the land collectors, the Qadis, village chiefs and elders uh, as experts were given the opportunity to express their views and also, uh, of course, it is with a uh, basis. So they use the concept of upah. Upah means payment. It's an important principle of the custom. So the upah uh, concept was developed uh, along with the Hatta uh, Sepancaran rule to, to give it a stronger basis. And also the British recognize Islamic law as the Lex Loci of Malaya. Lex Loci means the law of the land. So the British uh, said that in the case of Rama and Latan, the Islamic law is not foreign law. Because before the coming of the British colonialists, the Islamic law was the law of the land. Uh, the, the Malays were Muslims. When the uh, king, uh, the Malay Sultan converted to Islam, uh, re, um, the the all the people yeah they followed the Sultan so that was the Islamic law in practice yeah so this is where the British recognize that Islamic law is not foreign law but it is the uh, law of the land and ought to be given uh, due recognition by the court so R J Wilkinson is a British judge who argued the English law. Uh, if it's not being if it was not introduced earlier by the British, then it was the Sharia law that was in, in place, not the British law. So this is how uh, they they gave uh, the, the 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 judicial support for this um adat uh, uh, concept, and also in the case of Sheikh Abdul Rahman, uh, Sheikh Abdul Latif Bucks and others, and Sheikh Elias Bucks, that uh, before the, the first treaties of the. Uh, English um, law, the Mohammedan uh, Malays with a large industry and Chinese mining community in their, you know, they were using Islamic or Mohammedan law uh, as modified by the local customs. Uh, the Qadis also, uh, Qadis are the Sharia court judges, the Qadis also were called to give evidence on matters relating to Mohammedan uh, or Muslim law. So the Qadis argued according to Islamic law upon divorce, a uh, wife is entitled to half share the property acquired during the matrimonial union. The husband appealed and the appeal judge ruled that the wife was not entitled to a half share of the property. Uh, this is very interesting. And the, the, the courts were giving uh, judgment um, according to what they think is right in a particular circumstances. Of course, in Penang, it is totally not recognised, but in other states, as it is now, even Penang has codified the uh, Sharia principle yeah, as a uh, the, the adat as a Sharia principle. So the colonial court in the case of um, Tija and Ma'ali, uh, which was heard in the uh, court of Province Wellesley, part of the Prince of Wales Island of Penang, uh, they held that the um, parties were not entitled because uh, Province Wellesley was governed by English law. So in Penang at the time, it was not accepted uh, because British law ruled and uh, they, they don't want to take it. But however, in other states, uh, uh, the court uh, agreed yeah, to, uh, to to accept this as a Sharia principle. Family law under the principle of adult or custom is beneficial to the spouses and generally consonant with the words of the Quran which says that both men and women are equally rewarded for what they have earned. Quran Surah An nisa verse 32. So in Negris Milan, Islamic Family Law Enactment of 2003, Section 1, Negris Milan is state in uh, uh, Malaysia where they strongly uh, practice the uh, adapt property custom. So in this uh, enactment, uh, it was uh, defined uh, uh, in Section 2.1 uh, that jointly acquired property, uh, it means property acquired jointly during marriage or known in local as harta sepancaran as a property acquired by husband and wife, either directly or indirectly during the marriage period, in accordance with the conditions specified by Sharia. Under the law, both husband and wife has a right to claim Hatta Sepancharan upon divorce or death of either partner. So now, uh, upon divorce or death of either partner, or even when the husband takes a, a, a subsequent wife, legally, uh, the wife is entitled to um, claim the Hatta Sepancharan before uh, Farah 8 comes into picture. In the case of Roberts and Umik also, uh, Roberts is actually a British uh, revert who converted to Islam, married the Malay woman. And uh, in this case, the husband contributed um, 
a very high uh, amount to buy the to purchase the property of a house in Kuala Lumpur, and uh, the court held that the property was hatus pancharian as was equally distributed uh, as uh, to both of them. Yeah, uh, the wife claimed that um, you know, wife said that husband is not entitled, but the husband said the he's entitled, and the court held that he's entitled. In 2007, Mansur Nik Ali and Tuan Hafsa Tuan Man case, the court decided to reject the claims of plaintiff on jointly acquired property because the court considered properties involved as Hiba. So the plaintiff had previously given two houses to children, sold the automobile and transferred his uh, tabung haji savings to his wife as gift. The court carefully uh, evaluated all facts and arguments presented by the opposing sides before making decision on the jointly acquired property case. Uh, even in the case of uh, Ahmad Fit. Kri Mahmud, a 2007 case, court rejected the husband's claim on John Lake uh, House because the defendant provides solid argument along with a circumstantial evidence in the form of receipt of purchase of the house. Court did not evaluate the moral contribution of the husband while acquiring the property. Basically, the wife is the dominant. The court will determine both her explicit and implicit contributions on a jointly acquired property. So it looks like the woman is given better rights under this rule. Yeah? So the husband's contribution is recognised. But then... Um, the wife who uh, contribute in terms of financial and uh, is is given a you know better uh, right yeah so in the case of uh, Ahmad bin Fikri the husband uh, did not get the half share yeah? uh, whereas in the case of uh, Norsia Arshad uh, 2005 case court granted one third of the property uh, amount uh, giving uh, the wife's uh, share because she contributed uh, to the marriage and to the development of the property right uh, to the property in the marriage uh, for seven years of marriage. So uh, some of the cases show that this could be like in the case of Ahmad Fikri, this could be like a gender bias yeah? because um, you know it's like pro uh, woman, but actually it, it is not pro woman. To me, it's not a problem because the wife, despite not working, would have contributed much to the development. Uh, I, I'm not saying this because I'm a woman, but from my observation and reading um, many literature, even if the wife is not working, the contribution of wife to the household is uh, very, very, uh, uh, what do I say, very prominent, yeah? Because the wife... Um, will be taking care of the children, making sure everything is in, in harmony and peaceful in the home for the husband to go out and work and bring his income. And the wife, uh, you know, the wife's role in ensuring the economic state of the family develops because she um, manages the finance and she manages to help the husband uh, to, to get the property as well, although she does not contribute uh, financially. Uh, in, in, a, in a case, in a, in a this is not a... A Muslim uh, uh, issue is a dispute between non-Muslims, 1997. Uh, the judge here, Shankar J, defined matrimonial property as the matrimonial home and everything which is put into it by either spouse with the intention that their home and chattels should be a continuing resource for the spouses and their children to be used jointly and severally for the benefit of the family as a whole. So it doesn't matter uh, whether the asset is acquired solely by the one party or the joint effort of parties. Huh? So uh, the, the, the court gives the definition, which is very, very uh, important because this is the definition that is used by the Sharia court as well to decide um, you know, the, 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 what is the type of asset that is inclusive in the jointly acquired property. So what can be harta sapancharya involve land, matrimonial homes, uh, animals like a cow, goats, yeah, that is used to work on the land. As um, the Malays become urbanized and modern with greater purchasing power, matrimonial property also include movables such as household goods and the furnishings. Uh, Malaysians um, enjoy acquiring uh, movable things for the house to beautify the house, furniture, and sometimes the furniture can be very, very expensive. So this is why uh, the court, uh, you know, includes these uh, uh, furniture that are expensive, you know, fixtures, chandeliers, all this into the uh, joint acquired property besides the land and the house. So the legal provision that empowers the court now uh, is, uh, with all the development now uh, is in section 1 to 2, subsection 1 of the Sharia enactment, provides the court uh, the power when permitting the promise of talak or when making an order of divorce, 
in order uh, to order division between the parties when an asset acquired by them through the marriage of the, by their joint efforts or the sale of any such assets and division between the parties of the process of sale. This is very, very important development because uh, when there is bronze for talak, they are given this right for mediation or the court will make an order with the parties request. Uh, you know, this is very important because the woman's rights is protected. Yeah. So in exercising the power, the court has to have regard to a few matters. That is the extent of the contribution made by each party in money, property, or labor towards acquiring of the assets. Any debts owing by uh, either party that were contracted by the joint benefit and treat the needs of the minor children of the marriage. So it's not only taking into account the property, the value of the property, but also what are the debts. If it's a bank loan or any other loan that's uh, that has uh, the parties have incurred to be paid before the division of the property and also rights of the children, minor children, children who need care. Minor children are children uh, below the age of eighteen, uh, still uh, still uh, going through education, uh, so they, they they their rights are also protected before the division. Yeah, so it is very interesting. Some judges will make sure the wife's uh, property is given first before they divide, but some judges take into account all these aspects. But now the law is very clear uh, so that the judges do not uh, do their own interpretation. Section 1 to 2, subsection 3 of the enactment provides that situation where assets acquired during the marriage was solely by the efforts of one party of the marriage, the court may divide the assets or the proceeds of the sale uh, of the assets. So they, they may divide the asset or they may sell the asset and divide the proceeds. Huh? So this is also a, a, a manner of they 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 can do uh they can uh take it uh into account in dividing the property. Section one to two four of the act says that subject to these circumstances, the court may divide the assets or the proceeds of sale in such proportion the court thinks reasonable. So it could be one uh could be half, could be one third or one quarter, depending on how the parties provide their evidence, yeah, and how uh, they can substantiate. Uh, what payment they've done and how they've done. General principle, half share. Uh, if uh, uh, Then uh, exception is one third where the other party has not made much contribution except moral contribution and could be one quarter. So it, uh, it, it, it is very important for the wife or the husband to keep the receipts of payment uh, in acquiring the property. Section 1 to 2, subsection 5 provides that Hattus Pichara includes assets owned before the marriage by one party that have been substantially improved during the marriage by the other party or by the joint efforts. So if they come into a house, it's a, it's a very dilapidated house and they jointly develop the house. So when this money that is put into place should also be accounted for. So if just say the husband has contributed, the husband has a better share. If the wife has did, wife did all the contribution, the wife has a greater share. So the court will look into all the evidences provided by the parties. Yeah? Uh, there, are, there are very, very interesting case law, which uh, I have provided in my slide. Uh, I hope I can cover all that within the time given. Uh, so the, the 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 case law are very, very interesting. Uh, in the case of, in a 1985 case, Boto bin Jaffa, where the husband ran a business, but the wife um, is also, uh, although she's not directly involved in the business, but she accompanies the husband uh, in his business trips, you know, uh, take care, you know, uh, of, of his, I think, mental sanity when he travels. Huh? And she gave up her employment because of the marriage. And this is what the court took into account, saying that she left her employment and she helped the husband. So in this uh, case, uh, the husband uh, had to, give equal share to the wife, yeah, because she has given equal contribution. Uh, in another case, in 1987, Rukia and Muhammad Idris, the divorce are claimed for a land in Kuala Lumpur, shares and money in banks, is hardest pencharian from her husband. The court took into account of the indirect contributions of the wife, looking after the household, the husband and the children for the period of for 35 years of the marriage. So she was granted one-third of the properties. Because she did not give any financial contribution, she was given one-third of the property. Uh, equal distribution in the case of Hanifa is a much more recent case, 2009. This is the Malacca case, yeah, where the court uh, awarded uh, the parties equal distribution. Uh, there, were, there are many land and, you know, and uh, money, so the parties um, were given equal contribution. Yeah. So there are many more cases, which is which are in the slide, um, which could be uh, read. Uh, okay. In the case of Zaiton binti Abdullah, uh, the court uh, granted uh, the wife half share uh, because uh, 
she has contributed to the acquisition, acquisition of the property, that means the purchase of property. And uh, and then after the half share was given to her, then they divided uh, the, uh, the property according to Farai. Protection of the property, uh, Islamic Family Law, Federal Act 1984 was amended yeah, uh, to insert a new section, one, uh, section 107A. Uh, it is very interesting here. Yeah? Uh, the uh, court uh, uh, enabled uh, the, the, the distribution. At the same time, now the land registrar uh, can be ordered to enter a caveat. A caveat is restrain dealing or land dispute. So when there's a caveat entered while the court hearing is going on, the wife's uh, property rights are protected. So it's a very important development because the uh, National Land Court uh, recognizes the importance of the uh, caveat uh, in restraining dealing. So, and this importance is extended to uh, these Harta Sapancharian cases. So, when there is a dispute in the Sharia court, and the Sharia court will grant uh, a, 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 an order on the application of the wife or the husband, and this application, uh, order, the order is to give a capital interest. So, when the caveat is uh, placed on the land, the parties cannot deal with the land. No one can uh, do anything on the land. No sale, no uh, mortgage or anything over the land. So it is a very, very important development. Then the other development is that Section 23, uh, when the husband applies for a polygamous uh, a marriage uh, approval, the, the husband has to apply for a court uh, uh, and also to get the wife's consent in Malaysia. The husband must make an application to court for permission to contract a polygamous marriage. Yeah? So under the federal territory law, uh, every court that grants the permission orders a marriage to be registered under this section shall have the power on the application by any party to the marriage to require a person to pay maintenance to the existing wife or wives, you know, maybe he has more wives than one, and also to order the division between the parties of the marriage of any assets acquired by them during the marriage by their joint efforts uh, or the sale of any such assets and the division of the proceeds of the sale. This is a very interesting development uh, in 2006, yeah? where, you know, when the husband takes another wife, uh, we never know what's the nature of the subsequent wife. What, why she, what's the intention of marrying this man? Maybe she sees very uh, wealthy, so she would like to have a share of his property. So, But she failed to realize that the, uh, the first wife has been and very instrumental in him obtaining the property. So the Sharia scholars... Um, uh, uh, justified to the Sharia Council and the Sharia Council uh, inserted this provision. So this is a very important provision which provides protection for the woman's rights. So the woman now, not only uh, during the death of the husband or the divorce, she is now also entitled to the property uh, when the husband uh, goes for a polygamous marriage. So the woman's rights are actually very well protected by, by the law. So the, wife, uh, the woman can claim in three circumstances, yeah, upon divorce, upon death of the husband, and when the husband... Uh, but this polygamy um, rights uh, to for jointly acquired property is not uh, implemented in all states yet. Uh, the other states are only uh, giving... These rights are only upon divorce and death of the husband uh, or wife. But here, polygamy is only uh, in very few states. Soon, I think all the states will be taking this up. Huh? Uh, powers of court in distribution, uh, the Sharia court, uh, when granting a decree of divorce or judicial separation, uh, got the power to order additional matrimonial property between the parties or to order the parties to sell the property and divide the proceeds of the sale between the parties. So the court has power and also the court can uh, order a caveat to be entered so that the, the property will be available after the court grants judgment. So no party can sell the property. The property will be available for them to satisfy the judgment. So in making the court order, uh, the court will consider the extent of the contribution made by the party, you know, whether in the form of money, uh, uh, property, or working towards the action of the asset. The debts incurred by the party for the benefit of both parties and the needs of minor children. So the court's decision is not uniform. So the cases show that the uh, the the general principle is half share, but the court may even consider giving one third. Uh, con considering the uh, co contribution, yeah. So if the wife con is not uh, did not contribute financially, but more to the moral support of the family, taking care of the family, the court will be inclined to give only one third. If there is uh, a contribution uh, in terms of the wife working in the field, uh, contributing money, and also uh, you know all these 
can uh, entitle her to half share. So there's uh, we, in Malaysia we have uh, uh, something called em employee provident fund savings. I think it's available everywhere, but in Malaysia this is a very important uh, saving for people who are you know retiring. So when we work, we contribute to this uh, fund. So now the issue is whether uh, parties can be um, making a claim to the EPF savings of the other party. In the case of Timah Sulaiman, a 2001 case, uh, the court, uh, the plaintiff applied for muta'a and um, uh, hatta sepencarian uh, arising from the divorce. Muta'a means it's a gift also for the wife, hiba and muta'a. So hatta sepencarian is a bungalow in Port Dixon, a car and the savings in the APF. Issue where the plaintiff had provided sufficient proof to show that the properties were hatta sepencarian. So the Negeri Sembilan Sharia Court said that a car in APF money were hatta sepencarian. Efforts managed, uh, the wife's effort, management of the household without assistance, uh, she was entitled to get one share of the savings. Huh? So this is actually uh, quite interesting because EPF, if the, if, if the parties uh, hold big position, either the government or corporate sector, the EPF amount is quite high actually. It can be, it can be millions. So uh, it's um, it could be fair or unfair to the parties depending on how what is the contribution. So the court will be inclined to look into the contribution part. In the case of Chitman Abdullah, uh, there is an EPF uh, held by the husband. The court held that um, the the uh, EPF uh, claim cannot stand because it is a, a very small amount and uh, the court said there is no evidence that it can be part of uh, her desperate claim. So it's up to the court to decide what to, what to give and uh, how much to give. Uh, but this is not uh, discussion of the court per se. The court will look at the evidence uh, that is um, provided by the parties. Yeah? So the evidence of the parties are very, very important. So this is where uh, parties must uh, compare, must make sure that they keep sufficient evidence uh, to be, um, you know, to be produced before the court. Say, um, in conclusion, uh, when, when in Malaysia, uh, it is a very good, uh, example for other Muslim countries uh, to go through a similar process where we concretize the legal principles of law through judicial activism and uh, we, man we manage to uh, give a judicial status to a customary practice uh, in, uh, and also we manage to ensure that it's Sharia compliant and at the same time we manage to get it uh, as a Sharia rule. So the Sharia enactment has recognized uh, the woman's rights. So now women uh, are also given very special uh, status of, uh, I mean, the special status of Hartas of is, is is very, very important because it is allocated before payment of Muta'a, Hiba, and also the Vasya and uh, and Farai. Yeah? So Hartas Subancharian has become a very important Sharia rule and uh, we believe in Malaysia that we are very lucky uh, to get uh, this claim. Yeah? Uh, and we also uh, encourage other Muslim nations to study whatever good Sharia practices there is there to enable uh, parties, I'm not gender biased, both parties, uh, husband and wife, to, to acquire uh, property rights. Yeah? But now, as we see, women are the ones who are victimized most of the time when, when they, uh, upon divorce, some women, they leave their employment to help the husband, to manage the family. If the husband is able to provide for the family, some women, besides taking care of the family, also work to contribute to the family development. They work full-time and they come and manage the family full-time. So uh, there, there are situations where women are victimized. So this kind of rule is very, very important to enable um, women's property rights to be uh, protected. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was trying to rush through the process. Uh, and uh, I think that's my presentation. Dr. Abbas, there is no question.